Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking about books, more specifically the books I would sacrifice tag. Um, this is created by an American YouTuber whose name escapes me right now. Um, so I will link her below in the original video as well as the group of YouTubers that inspired me to do this. The group's called Paperback Beauty Facts and they are a group of beauty bloggers um, who decided to get together and collaborate on a channel and it's a really good channel, it's really interesting. They pick a different theme each week and they each upload a video based on that theme. So um, they're really watchable, really quick videos and I suggest you go check them all out because they're really, really good. So this is only gonna be a very quick tag but I thought, well, I'll throw something different in there because I do love my books. Books have been a massive part of me um, since I was a very little girl because growing up in a house with four brothers and a sister, things could get really hectic really quickly and I was always quite wary of hectic situations. So books were my, well, books provided an escape. So I've read my whole life and I love reading and I just thought I'd share this tag with you and I thought this would be quite a fun tag to do because everyone talks about hyped up books quite a lot um, but no one talks about the books that really didn't deserve to be published so I'm going to talk to you about those. There's only four questions so let's get started. The first question is which book did you think was overhyped? Now this is going to be quite a controversial um, answer but I did think Fifty Shades of Grey was massively overhyped. I haven't got the book to show you because I borrowed it off a friend of mine and I'm glad I borrowed it because if I'd have bought it it would have been such a waste of money. I'm not against erotica, I think it's a great way for women to find a more accessible route into porn and enjoying sex. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that at all. In fact, my sister's probably got about two bookshelves full of it. <laughs> she loves it. And, you know, the erotica has been around for decades now and I have read some and enjoyed some, but I just thought Fifty Shades of Grey, for what it was, was not particularly great. In fact, I wouldn't hesitate to throw it on a bonfire if uh, I needed some extra fuel, purely because the writing was so repetitive. It didn't involve any skill, like anyone can write about sex, it's not hard. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> sorry. Um, but no, I just, I just found it repetitive, all the adjectives were repetitive. I tell you what, if the leading lady Anna had flushed one more time at the thought of Christian Grey, I was going to stab myself in the eye with a pen. I was just bored for most of it, um, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, I know a lot of people did enjoy it, it brought erotica to the mainstream and um, the sort of dominant submissive relationship that a lot of people do fantasise about and a lot of people do like, um, that became more open and widely accepted because of Fifty Shades of Grey but I'll be honest with you, I didn't enjoy it purely because I just found it so boring, there was like no action on, unless they were bonking and I was just like... Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I just thought that was massively overhyped. The second question is, which sequel let you down? I don't have a sequel to show you, but I do have a second book by an author. Um, purely because I don't tend to read sequels. I don't know why, I just find in general sequels let me down, so I don't really read them. I didn't enjoy the Harry Potter books or any of the sequels. The only sequel that I really did enjoy was The Lord of the Rings. Um, I have read The Hunger Games, but I wouldn't read the second one, um, so I don't know. I, but this one I've got to show you is by an author called Jane Fallon. Now, Jane Fallon is in a relationship with Ricky Gervais, the last I read, so, and she's a very funny journalist in her own right as well. So the first book she published was called Getting Rid of Matthew, which I really enjoyed, and then she published Got You Back, and... I didn't enjoy this, it let me down, it wasn't as witty or as quirky as I was expecting Fallon's writing to be in the second book, I was expecting sort of a progression and no, it just didn't work. It was on a similar vein to getting rid of Matthew, it was about relationships because this is chick lit, let's be honest, and um, it was just a really strange sort of setup. It was basically about this vet that's leading a double life between two women. The two women find out they want to get him back, so they team up and it all kicks off. 
one goes a bit mental. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was an obvious story, ended in a obvious way. The writing was pretty good, but I just I just expected more from the author. And um, to be honest with you, it stopped me reading any more of her published books because I just thought I'm not interested now. If you're going to get worse instead of better, you're not you're not really an author for me. But I do recommend getting rid of Matthew if you want some light reading, something a bit entertaining. I did enjoy that one, but unfortunately, she let herself down with "Got You Back." Okay, the third book is Which Classic Doesn't Deserve Classic Status? I haven't got any classics on my bookshelf that I don't think deserve to be classics because I'm very much Jane Austen, Rudyard Kipling, Charles Dickens, the very quintessential English author classics and I really enjoy reading those and I do think they deserve to be classics. The modern classic I'm going to say doesn't deserve to be a classic and I can't believe it's been hyped as a modern classic. I just it just baffles me, is Elizabeth Gilbert's Eat, Love, Pray, or Eat, Pray, Love even. Um, I read this, expecting great things, massively hyped. Oh, it's a modern classic, it touches on everything in life, it touches on the, you know, where you should go and what you should do, it's great, it's a great mix of relationships and travel and food and it's, it's really poignant and, no. I, it was hard work for starters. Now I've read classics that are hard work and in the end they pay off and you're glad you've read them and you can tick them off the list of things to read before you die and you know you can say I enjoyed that. I, it was a struggle but I enjoyed it. This was a struggle and I didn't enjoy it. I didn't even enjoy the film. Um, basically it's a lady who has a massive relationship breakdown and decides to go and find herself. She goes to Italy for a few months to eat and enjoy food. She goes to India stays in an ashram, finds herself there and then goes to Bali and finds love of her life. It's got a sequel as well but like I said before, I, if, if the first book lets me down then I'm rarely going to try and find the sequel and seek that out as well. Um, I just don't understand the need for this to be a modern classic at all. I just think it's a lot of drivel and while it does have some good points, it was hard work finding the good points but then if hundreds of other people love it, I must be wrong. Well, I'm, I can't, well, I'm not must be wrong, but maybe I'm just a bit harder to please. And then the fourth question is, which book would you quite happily burn? I've read some absolute shit, and I'm not apologising for the, the swearing there, in my time. Um, I've read some god-awful books, and... I've bought some god-awful books, but I think the one thing that I genuinely hated the most was this. It's called Pop-Tart. It's a collaboration between Kira Copeland and Julianne Kay, and it says she was America's sweetheart until the love affair turned sour. It's basically about a starlet who um, rises to pop stardom and then all the trials and tribulations that go with it. It's absolute drivel. It's very easy reading, big font. You know when it's in a big font, it's not going to be intellectually challenging. And yeah, basically it was just the a waste of money. I think it was on half price at WH Smith when I picked it up and I thought, oh, that looks okay. Um, looks a bit different. Yeah, no. I mean, it didn't really go anywhere. It didn't really do anything. It was just drama after drama. And to be honest, if I wanted that, I'd just go out on a Friday night around my hometown and watch it instead of read it. Um, yeah, so I would quite happily burn this if I needed to. And I probably will on a barbecue this summer, thinking about it. That sounds really scathing, but you can... You, some books have some redeeming qualities. This does not. So... Yeah, basically that was the book sacrifice tag, I think. Um, yeah, so I'll link everything below if you want to go and check out the original um, YouTuber who did this and Paperback Beauty Facts. Please go and check out Paperback Beauty Facts because they're all lovely. And I will speak to you all soon. Bye!